Now we'll be diving strictly into the world of boxing this morning, talking about Kubret Pulev, who will be fighting heavyweight world champion Anthony Joshua in London on December 12th. Bulgaria's IBF mandatory challenger said this on Monday. The 39-year-old had been scheduled to meet Joshua on June 20th, but the fight was postponed due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Now I've got boxing pundit Bamidele Bakari on standby to give us more insights on this. Good morning, Bamidele. Thank you for joining us on the show this morning. Thank you for having me. How are you guys? Very well, thank you. Now, we know that this fight is long awaited, definitely. Pulev has been waiting for this. Finally, he gets his chance to be the IBF World Heavyweight Champion. Do you see him possibly taking that title away from Anthony Joshua? Oh, well, to be, to be honest with you, I won't be talking Bayer's bias because um, AJ has a um, Nigerian decency. But um, AJ is a world champion, and um, trust me, he's ready to defend his, um, his title. Because um, the titles that are at stake here are the WBA Super, IBF, the WBO, and the IBO Everywhere title. So that's not, um, those are not titles to joke around with. And AJ also has um, other um, bouts that he, he will be thinking about. Because if he beats um, Kubrat Kulev, because there's this news about Tyson Fury eyeing AJ, not thinking about the trilogy with um, Deontay Wilder. So he's got all that big challenges ahead of him. So I'm sure he would take this very seriously. Hmm. All right. Now, Ifyaka, uh, talking about this fight, is there any chance of an upset for Kulev? Do you think he has what it takes to take that title away from Anthony Joshua? Okay, to be frank with you, it's a possibility. Okay. Remember Ruiz. Mm -hmm. No one expected that um, Ruiz was going to defeat Joshua in that um, first bout they had. But then I'm sure Joshua must have learned from the Ruiz fight, and I know he's not going to take anything for granted. Mm -hmm. He's not going to underrate Pulev. Don't forget that in 2017, uh, this fight was supposed to have you know, happened True. in 2017, but due to injury to Pulev, you know, Takam came in uh, mm. to challenge Joshua. And then here we are now, Pulev is back in the picture. Mm. And don't forget that the big one we are all looking forward to is um, that unification fight between Joshua right. and, of course, Fury. So Joshua needs to win this fight if mm. we are going to see, you know, the two Brits um, go head to head next year. I'm rooting for Joshua. Mm. I believe that Joshua has everything it takes to win this fight. But Pulev has come out to say that, you know, he, he has seen some weak points in Joshua and then he's going to uh, use that against Joshua. But I just believe uh, the camp of Joshua know that this one is a big one. They need to beat uh, to win this fight if uh, Joshua still needs to retain that IBF. Hmm. All right, now, Bam Dele, in a recent interview, you know, Tyson Fury confirmed that the trilogy battle with Deontay Wilder is no longer possible. After foregoing the series of dates for the trilogy fight, it is believed that Wilder's team missed a deadline to suggest a new date for the fight, and now negotiations are off and Fury is looking elsewhere. The issue of finding a date had been complicated by coronavirus, as we all know, and the potential lack of crowds because of the pandemic, and also with Wilder undergoing surgery and physio for a bicep he injured in the loss to Fury in February this year. So, Bam Lady, without a doubt, it seems to be that there is a clear pathway to that unification bout. What should we look forward to in the potential unification bout between Fury and Anthony Joshua? Well, um, right now, things... Deontay Wilder is, might not be able to face Fury for the trilogy. We will be waiting to watch um, Tyson Fury and Joshua probably sometime in 2021. Because in the recent news, I saw that, um, Tyson Fury saying he is now eyeing AJ, which was not top on his list. Which was not top on his list initially. But right now, since um, Deontay Wilder camp, they are like, they don't think Wada is going to be ready to face Fury anytime soon. The next major bout everyone will be waiting for is Tyson Fury AJ. But as we know right now, this mandatory challenge with Kubrat Kulev, AJ has to come out successful. Mm. Because if he does, I don't think um, Tyson Fury would want to take any chance with him because there will be nothing at stake. But I strongly believe AJ would give his best fight because it's about has been in talks for a while. Even before um, the COVID-19, they were supposed to have it um, sometime in June. Mm. June um, 22nd, I guess. Yeah, so, so I believe AJ would go all out for this bout. 
All even right. though Kubat Pulev is also very dangerous, he's got 28 wins, one loss. AJ's got 28 wins, one loss. But AJ's got 21 KOs and Kubat Pulev's got 14 KOs. So regardless of the situation, I'm rooting for AJ. Hmm. All right, now, Bamile, just before I let you go, uh, talking about the fact that if and when, you know, Joshua triumphs against Kulev and then he moves over to that unification bout against um, Tyson Fury, who do you think will come out as the victor in that bout? Hey, Chai, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I won't be biased with this. Hmm. It's going to be a tough one. But, but, to me, Fury is like heavyweight presently. But whether we like it or not, the only heavyweight challenger that can face Fury, that can beat Fury, is AJ, which is not a certainty. It's not a certainty. But AJ is always a chance. Even David A, legendary David A, said in, in an interview, said the only heavyweight challenger that can beat Fury presently is AJ. But it's not 100%. Mm. To me, it's not the all right, now, Bamidele, thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. Do continue thank to stay safe. Thank you for having safe. me, bro.